This is the Talk of Taos. It is a production of the Taos News in Taos, New Mexico. I'm your host, Rick Romancito, editor of Tempo Magazine. Today's date is October 23rd, 2019. Today we're talking with Larry Torres, who, in, who this year retired from the University of New Mexico Taos after 43 years as an educator. But something tells me Mr. Torres still has a lot to teach about the people and cultures of northern New Mexico. Now, since this recording is conducted a week before Halloween and the Days of the Dead, tell us, Mr. Torres, what, what does this time of year mean to you? This time of the year means to me that we are in the time of transition. It is that time of the year, that season, when the veil between the living and the dead gets thinner and thinner. Certainly the air is getting thinner, as you have noticed. There was a slight chill in the air. And when I greeted you this morning, I said it was just enough to let us know that we're still alive. We're still on this side of the curtain. But there are other beings on the other side of the curtain. And so this is what this time of the year means to me. The idea that there is a time of transition. Sometimes the dead slip to this side and we need to recognize where they are. Somebody said, have you ever seen a dead person? And I said, many more times than you could imagine. I said, locally they are called descarnados, or the unfleshed ones. That means that even though they have their body, the shape of the body that they had here on earth, really, they are just spirits who have lost their way. Somebody said, is there something that tells you about these descarnados, these unfleshed characters? And I said, oh yes. There was a time when I was gassing up over at the gas station and a lady came up to me and said Mr. T, Professor, I said yes ma'am she said I'm seeing a man and I said does your husband know about this she, <laughs> she said no not that kind of a man I'm, she said I mean I see a man standing by the side of the road and I said and and she says and he's not scary but every time that I drive past him he waves and then disappears into thin air and I said ah have you noticed if there was a descanso, a little resting place anywhere near where he was, a, a, cl a cross maybe? She said, I don't remember. And I said, let me pay my, uh, my uh, gas ticket and then we'll go see. She went and checked it out. She came back. She said, yes, there's a cross that fell down. And I said, thank you. Just uh, answered something for me. During this time of year, whenever you see somebody who is standing very close to a descanso, that means that they are a spirit, a soul, a ghost, a phantom something unworldly that has lost his way or her way and they need to get going to the other side. And she said, how do we get rid of it? And I said, you don't need to get rid of it. You just need to give it permission to go forward. She said, can you do that? And I said, yeah. She said, how? And I said, oh, there's something called the rite of exorcism. Where would I, would I get this? And I said, <laughs> very few people know, but I always keep the rite of exorcism with me in my car, especially during this time of year. Really? And so I just opened it up there and I started with the Libra me Domine de Morte Eterna y Dile y le Tremenda Cuando Cheri Moventi Sunt Terra. In Latin, deliver me, O Lord, from everlasting death. Help me get to my place of rest. And I said, pray for this person and know that this person does not wish you any ill will. He just needs to get going to where he is. And again, we re erected the cross. She never saw that person again. Wow. So that's an idea of what might happen this time of year. For some of our readers or listeners who uh, uh, are unfamiliar with a descanso, what is it? A descanso is a resting place. Usually, in the days before, there were cars in abundance or even pickup trucks in abundance here in Taos County. People had to carry the dead to the cemetery in their coffins. They would put the dead person on the shoulders of six dirty young men and they would put them uh, and take them to their final resting place. But sometimes it was a long way off so they would put the coffin down and switch shoulders so that they would not get uh, the weight only on one side. And that's how this descanso tradition began. Mm -hmm. And then later on it was said that when somebody lost a soul by the side of the road, that means where a soul was spilled, where a car crashed with a wall or with another car maybe, then a cross was put up so that people would mark that as a final resting place. This is not the place where the body was buried, but this is a place where the spirit began its journey home. I see. Now, aside from Halloween, Many people in this area celebrate the Days of the Dead. First, explain a little about what El Dia de los Muertos is, and then tell us about how this tradition became 
rooted in northern New Mexico. Thank you. It's really interesting to see that the Halloween is really relatively a new tradition here in the Southwest. It is something that has been made popular with such things as Hallmark and uh, and all those other card. Uh, card sharks I was going to say <laughs> all those other card people who want to make some kind of a profit during the summer year the, the, the candy companies but before this time really no it was a time when the dead would come back to visit the living and sometimes the reason that they came back Rick was because of the fact that they had forgotten that that is we the living had forgotten to give them the proper burial whether it was we had not given them permission to go forward into the new life somebody said how do you give a dying person permission to go over to the new life and I said well the old tradition is you take off their shoes and then you rub soil on the bottoms of the, the, the soles of their feet and that is that is, you're, 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 you are given permission to return back to the earth from which you came. But if somebody didn't do that for you, or if somebody did not call out the word, Jesus, Jesus, as they were dying, also the spirit might have gotten stuck. Or if the person was dying in a room where there had been a mirror that had not been covered, the soul might have gotten stuck there. Mm -hmm. We have very many traditions that tell us about how it is possible for, for, for spirits to get stuck in on this side they say for example if you see a person with a white shirt walking in front of your night at night somebody's gonna die if a bird bumps its head on your window somebody's gonna die little things like this if you hear a stone or stones falling on your roof in the middle of the night somebody's going to die so there are about seven or eight different ways of doing this but in any case this is what we think of Dia de los Muertos over here it is that the dead are coming back to receive something that they did not receive to send them forward. Maybe they starved to death. In that case, we have to feed the dead. The feeding of the dead is something which is very, very familiar to a lot of people here in northern New Mexico, and it does happen. If you go to Mexico, you're going to find out there are specific foods that are put out in front of them, and you make a trail for them with something called sampoantli, as we say in Aztec. Sampoantli are marigold blossoms. For years and years, I used to see the local ladies, Rick, who would go to the cemeteries uh, during this time of year, and they would take orange gray paper and cut it up and sprinkle it over the graves. I would ask them, why do you do this? They say, because it looks pretty. And I said, okay, thank you. No, that's not it. We get it all the way from the Aztecs. Again, Zapuatli. It was the marigold blossoms, the color orange, and the color deep yellow are the colors of the undead, the people who had need to go forward, and they need to find a trail. Compare this, if you will, to what happens at Christmas time when we put on the little lanterns, the little farolitos, to light the way for the Christ child, we say. Again, you're creating a, a uh, caminito, a little roadway, so that the spirits can find their way back home and then do what they need to do and then go over there. Mm -hmm. They say that if you will not give them these, then they come to do damage. That's the origin of trick or treat. Ah. If you do not give them the, the treat that they came searching for, for which they keep searching, uh, then they will come and maybe chalk your windows or, or, or turn your outhouse over, little things like this. <laughs> And it's if not you do, exactly a little thing. It's not a little thing, no. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the thing you do not want is to wake up on a cold, frosty autumn morning and find that your outhouse isn't standing anymore. <laughs> so be, be, be careful with the dead. <laughs> they can be vicious. Exactly. <laughs> now, of course, being that Halloween is right around the corner, a lot of people equate this season with all things ghostly. Uh -huh. Since you're such a repository of knowledge about the cultures of this area, what are the, some of the more notorious ghost stories that you can tell us? Well, well, there are several ghost stories, but if you want something that is totally, totally local, we have to remember that there was a man over here by the name of Arthur Rochefort Mamby. And Arthur Rochefort Mamby came over here to Taos in the late 1800s. He was an Englishman who came. Apparently, he was driven out of England by his own family who found him, as I said, let me see what was written about him, that he was of unsavory character. So we don't know exactly what he did way back when in England. But when he came over here, what he decided to do was to get as much land as possible from the local people. Well, how was he going to do this? Ah, uh, then he saw that there was a local gypsy lady by the name of Teresa Ferguson, who was reading cards in the middle of Taos Plaza. Well, Teresa Ferguson was the illegitimate daughter of a Scottish trapper and a local Spanish girl. And she was probably one of the first truly bilingual people here in Taos, New Mexico. 
Well, he thought, ah, this is the lady that I'm going to need to help me get what I need to do. And so what happened was, it's funny. So what I have to do now is get her to help me. So he slipped her a bunch of money, and then she started predicting for all the people, saying, oh, your water tables are dropping. Sell the land, sell the land. She created such a panic that people didn't know what to do. Where could we sell our land real fast? Suddenly, they saw that the old gringo, as they called Archer, Archer Bambi, that was the first time gringo was used here in Taos pejoratively. The old gringo was at Taos Plaza, and he was fanning himself with $20 bills. So they sold <laughs> the property for <laughs> to him. Well, when they found out, Rick, that they had been swindled, not only by Teresa Ferguson, but by Arthur Ratcher, remember, he, and both of them had been in cahoots, they decided that they were going to lynch him. So they went, and they thought, oh, we're going to we we're gonna get him good. Well, what happened was that he had bought a, about three Mastiff dogs, big, big dogs, and he would come to the post office only once at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every day. Well, this was in 1929. He came on July the 1st, July 2nd, July 3rd, and no, nothing. They, they couldn't get near him because of the, of the dogs that were near him. Well, finally they thought, let's go just break into his house. Well, they went to his house, which is now, I believe, called, what's the name of that restaurant, which is by the Stables Art Gallery. I'm trying to remember, but it'll come to me. But let's just say for the Stables Art Gallery for now. And in any case, what happened there, they tried to break into his house, and suddenly they found out that the dogs were foaming at the mouth at the, in the autumn heat. And they shot the dogs and went into the house, and they found a badly decomposed body inside that was missing a head. Well, they thought, well, it serves that old gringo right for trying to, uh, to, to, to swindle us out of everything that we have. Well, then what happened was this. He was buried. Then what happened? Well... Somebody said, the month following this, uh, I just saw him in Santa Fe. Somebody said, no, no, I just saw Mambi. No, he was over in Carson City, Nevada. Somebody said, I saw him in New York City. Somebody else said, I saw him in Paris. Rick, five times the body of Arthur B Richard Mambi has been dug up from his grave in, in, the, in the cemetery in Kit Carson Park. And five times there has been a different body inside the grave. So the question is, whose bodies were those? <laughs> When and, I, and anyone who goes to the Kit Carson Cemetery here in Taos knows that the that there is a grave marker for mm -hmm. Arthur Manby that's located just outside of the proper ceremony, the cemetery. Exactly. It was because even though he owned the land and he actually planted the first lilac blossoms and the first trees there in the Kit Carson Park, the reason that he wasn't put into the cemetery was because of his dealings with what we called La Bruja, Teresa Ferguson. <laughs> okay, and again, we don't usually say much about poor Teresa, may she rest in peace, because she still has relatives here in Taos. But this is a story that was printed and a little fictionalized by a man by the name of Frank Waters. Frank Waters wrote it up as a book called To Possess the Land. But if you don't have time to read 357 pages, then you can buy a 13-page pamphlet called Headless and Taos <laughs> at any bookstores. But that tells you about how some of the dead uh, live on in the local lore of this area. Well, isn't there, um, aren't there reports of, of ghosts in the Taos Inn, which was located right next door to Manby's house? Absolutely. There's stories there. And the stories begin read right at the wall, because the wall that of Mamby's house used to trade the, uh, uh, used to share the same wall with the house in where the kitchen is right now and it happened that the people would start preparing for the early morning shift and they'd come in the middle of the night and suddenly a pan or a pot would fly across the room without any reason to do so and crash or a spoon a big spoon and people started getting spooked they didn't know what what happened and somebody said it's the ghost of Arthur Bambi wanting to get his revenge and they said we have to find that head of Mamby and repatriate it with the rest of the body so where is the head of Mamby? Well, the story is that if you go and right into the foyer of the Tao Sin, there is what you call a well right in the middle of that drinking area, do you see? And if you dig deep enough, you're likely to find the head of Arthur Roacher at Mamby. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, but that's the story that people have said because oh, they knew that the man's head was in there. Is he there? I don't know. <laughs> but that's what makes it such a fascinating place to be here in Taos and tell all those things. Absolutely. Well, we thank you for your time, Mr. Torres, and wish you well in your retirement. Uh, this is the Talk of Taos. 
It's a production of the Taos News in Taos, New Mexico. I'm your host, Rick Romancito, editor of Tempo Magazine. Buena bye. Buena bye.